Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the difference between traditional TSP and Roth TSP, and I'm gonna give you my opinion, which is better. For those who don't know me, my name is Jake and I'm active duty military, and I'm pretty new to the TSP and I've been trying to figure it out, so I've been making this series of YouTube videos to help explain what I've learned to other people. I've already made a couple videos about what is the TSP and the individual funds. Uh, I talked about the G funds, also the life cycle funds and why they're not so good. If you haven't seen those videos already, check them out, but let's get started. Real quick disclaimer, once again, I'm just some guy on YouTube. I am not a tax professional or retirement expert, so definitely do your own research, listen to my opinion, but then obviously do your own research and make your own decisions. Just in case people are unclear, the TSP is the government's thrift savings plan, and that is the government's 401k equivalent. And there's two kinds that you can invest in, both traditional and Roth. Now, when I've asked this question in the past, or when you watch other videos on YouTube, you always get the simple explanation of if your marginal tax rate is high now and will be lower in the future, go traditional, or if your marginal tax rate is low now and will be higher in the future, go Roth. And I never really liked this explanation. I always want specific numbers. So in today's video, that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try and control for as many variables as we can in the retirement equation and see which is better, you know, if it's a flat rate, if it's a consistent same marginal tax rate across your lifetime, which is better traditional or Roth. A couple things you need to know first is that you still pay FICA taxes, 6.2% for Social Security and 1.45% on Medicare for both traditional and Roth. Investing in traditional does not get you out of FICA taxes today. Both accounts grow tax-free over time. That's the whole point of a retirement account, year to year. You're not paying capital gains taxes on what you earn in your investments. Both types of accounts have a required minimum distribution at the age of 70. And you can actually do both funds simultaneously, whether you want to or if you're getting a government match. Let's pretend you're contributing 5% to your Roth TSP and your government matches 5%. That 5% has to go in the traditional. The reason why is the government is not gonna pay your taxes for you for that matching. So any matching that happens has to go in the traditional side while you're still contributing yourself to the Roth side. Okay, in our example, we're gonna do the theory of traditional TSP versus Roth TSP. We're gonna start with the theory and then I'm gonna say what's actually happening. But let's suppose that Bart and Lisa Simpson are both grown up now and they're 30 years old and they enter government service. And they're gonna be working from age 30 to age 60. They wanna retire right away at age 60 and they're gonna earn $100,000 every year. We're gonna keep this flat just so we can see what happens. And they're gonna contribute 12% of their earnings to their TSP. 12% uh, would be $1,000 a month. That's a nice round number, easy, easy for math. And this TSP is gonna be earning 7% a year. Both live in states with no income tax. So we don't have to factor in uh, state income tax. So if you live in Florida, Texas, or Wyoming, this, this would make it easier for you. We're also gonna assume that they both take the standard deduction when they do their taxes and that all other taxes, uh, you know, Social Security, Medicare, we're not factoring any of that in. So for this example, we need to figure out what is their effective federal tax rate. And in this video, I'm not gonna explain marginal tax rates. If you wanna understand how tax brackets work, I recommend going to the channel Vox. Just search for how ta tax brackets actually work. It's a three minute video and it does a really good job of explaining how tax brackets work. But this is the 2018 earned income tax brackets. So for Bart Simpson earning $100,000 a year, he would have to pay taxes of 15.4%. That is his effective federal tax income rate. These are the brackets and money he earns at this amount is uh, taxed at 10%, 12%, 22, and then 24. He's not paying taxes on the last $12,000 because he's taking the standard deduction. In these examples, nobody is itemizing anything. However, what about Bart's traditional TSP contributions? If you contribute to your traditional TSP, then taxes you would pay this year are deferred until you pull the money out. So what happens is the last $12,000 worth of income that Bart would have been paying federal income tax on, it, it's eliminated. And he's only actually paying $12,659 this year. 
So his effective federal income tax rate dropped this year from 15.4% to 12.7% because he was contributing to his traditional TSP. Lisa, on the other hand, is contributing to her Roth and she does not get the tax deduction. So in effect, she will be paying $2,750 more per year in federal income tax than Bart would have otherwise. And every year for 30 years. So back to the theory of traditional versus Roth, Bart is gonna contribute the full 12,000. However, Lisa wants to contribute 12,000, but she knows that she's gonna to have to pay taxes. Her tax bill is gonna be higher. So she can't actually contribute the full 12,000. She has to account for how much she's gonna pay in federal taxes. So she's actually only gonna, only gonna contribute 9.25% or $9,250 a year. You do a simple compound interest calculator, assuming, you know, for Bart's 12,000 a year, 30 years to grow, 7% interest rate, we'll compound it 12 times annually. Bart comes out with 1,227,000 and Lisa has 945,000. So it looks like Bart's ahead. However, Lisa has already paid her federal income tax. Bart still has to do this. And for this example, we're saying that both Bart and Lisa at age 60 want to pull the entire fund out. Maybe they want to do some traveling, they want to build their dream home, they want to take that money and reinvest it themselves in other ways. Bart then has to pay that 15.4% effective tax rate that he has not been paying for the last 30 years. That comes out to a tax of $188,000. So his total ends up being about 1,038,000 to Lisa's 945. It kind of makes it look equal or at least close enough where it doesn't really matter, except that is not what would be Bart's tax rate because of our marginal tax system. If at age 60, Bart tried to withdraw that $1.2 million, you'll notice that there's this bucket down here, they call them buckets, but the last one for any income greater than half a million dollars you have to pay a tax rate of 37%. So I calculated how much in taxes would Bart actually owe if he wanted to pull out that full 1.2 million, and he would owe $419,000. So he actually only has $807,000. So now it kind of looks like, traditional versus Roth, that Roth is better. However, this is not what's actually happening. In reality, this is not how people think. This is not how people invest in their TSP. The fact that Bart wanted to contribute 12% or 1,000 a month, Lisa would probably end up doing the same. She would be contributing 12% or 1,000 a month if that's what she just decided she wanted to do. People don't really consider their tax advantages or how much they're gonna to have to pay in taxes a year from now before they start picking an arbitrary number. And most experts say you should put 15% of your income towards retirement. That's just what people do. They don't think about, well, I need to subtract how much I need to pay in federal taxes next March. That's not what people do. Hmm. So these are the actual numbers that would happen. Bart would contribute his 12,000. Lisa would also contribute her 12,000. When you calculate the 15.4% tax rate that Lisa gets year to year, What's actually happening is Lisa's putting $13,848 towards her retirement. It's the $12,000 she's putting in the account to equal Bart's, and then she's paying the taxes now. You can think of paying the taxes now basically as an investment in your retirement that will pay off when you're 60, and you can withdraw this money and not pay income tax on it. So given these numbers, Lisa's actually saving $1,848 a year more than Bart is for retirement. So let's go back to what's actually happening in traditional versus Roth. Bart after taxes, that $400,000 tax bill, and Lisa pulling out her money. And once again, this is Lisa actually contributing the same dollar amount or percentage as Bart in traditional. Lisa ends up with $1.2 million and Bart only ends up with 807,000. So that's a difference of $400,000. So at this point, you might be thinking Roth is better, right? However, there's one thing that we haven't mentioned yet. Bart was saving $2,750 a year on his taxes for 30 years, and that equals $82,500. The question is now, what did Bart do with that $82,500 in tax savings? 
There's a lot of good options. You could pay off high interest credit card debt or interest loans. You could be buying property. You could be investing in your own personal IRA. There's a lot of things that Bart could be doing with that tax savings to really set himself up for success in the future. However, I don't think that's what's happening for most people. I think most people who pay into traditional and then get the tax break, they just spend that money year to year. You can think of it as lifestyle creep. You know, the more you make, the more you have, the more you spend. Maybe he got a more expensive car. Maybe he took a fancy trip. You know, maybe he bought a boat or something of that nature. I really like Roth because you're being more aggressive in how much you're saving for your retirement. For me personally, if I don't have the money, I'm not spending it. If I have the money, then I might be spending it. So this was a very simplified example of two people contributing 12%, earning exactly 100,000 over a 30 year period. Lisa will finish at 1.2 million, Bart will finish at 800,000, but there's this mystery $82,000 in tax savings that Bart got that once again, he could be wisely investing to help himself in retirement, or he could have just spent 82,000 on a boat. Some final thoughts for this video. If your taxable income is low now, you should definitely be doing Roth. If you're earning less than 50,000 a year, that's 38,000 plus the standard deduction of 12,000, then your effective federal tax rate is only about 11%. You'd fall in an average somewhere of around here. And 11% for a federal income tax is not bad because as soon as you start earning more, it jumps, you know, after 50,000, it'll jump to 22,000 and then after around 130,000, it'll jump again to 32. There are a lot of people in government service who are making six figures or more, but if you're younger or more junior in your position with the government and you're not making much more than 50,000 a year, then you should be doing Roth in my opinion regardless because your federal income tax rate is not that high to begin with. Another reason why I think you should be doing Roth is you should really have multiple streams of income that you'll be planning on having in retirement. You should potentially have a private brokerage account with investments. You should have a Roth IRA, a personal retirement account. You're eventually gonna be collecting social security if you live long enough. You might also own property and potentially have rental income. And you may wanna have a part-time job or a, you know, a side business or something you own. These are all various sources of income that you're gonna to have to pay tax on. Why would you not take advantage of having a Roth TSP account where you're guaranteed you don't have to pay income tax on that income when you'll have to pay income tax potentially on all of these others? So once again, if you're over 60 and you think in today's dollars, you'll be making more than 50,000 a year, which hopefully you should be, then you wanna lock in this tax-free income guaranteed through your Roth TSP account. Now, if you made it to this point in the video, you must be thinking, wow, he is really biased against the traditional. There's gotta be some good reasons for traditional. And these are honestly the ones that I can think of now that I've done the math and I, I think I understand it all. The first example is that you're making way more than 100,000 a year and you wanna save money on paying taxes, you know, when you're in the 27, 32% bracket range. You wanna save money on paying taxes so you can invest it somewhere else real estate, private RAs, maybe a personal business. For people who are high income earners now who are really financially savvy and uh, wanna, wanna have more control, more money today to set themselves up for the future, then I do think, yeah, a traditional TSP for that person would make sense. Going back to my example, if you were Bart Simpson, what would you do with that 82,000 in tax savings? Another reason for traditional that might not be very good is you make a lot of money, but you're currently experiencing economic hardship. Perhaps you've overspent and you have a lot of personal loans or high interest credit card debts. If you're more concerned about your financial situation in the short term and you need that tax saving while still contributing to your TSP to get the matching, then this makes sense. If you're saying, I, I need to focus on other costs today, uh, but I need to still contribute that minimum five in order to get the matching, then traditional makes sense. The last reason I can think of for doing traditional, which once again is not a very good reason, is you expect to have no other income sources in the future 
and will be taking very low distributions over a long period of time from your traditional TSP. So everyone's got to eventually start collecting Social Security. So let's say that you're collecting Social Security, getting your 20 some thousand dollars a year, and then you plan on only withdrawing about $20,000 a year from your traditional TSP. This would keep you in this 12% tax bracket where you're only living on less than 50,000 a year raw. And for a lot of Americans, this is exactly what happens. There's a lot of people in their later years of life where all they have is social security or they have a retirement account, but it only has a couple hundred thousand dollars in it. For those people who in their senior years are gonna to have to live with less, then traditional makes sense because they don't have a lot of money and they're not gonna be taxed that much. However, if you're watching this video and you're a little bit younger, then you have time. And there's really no reason without proper financial planning that you can't retire potentially almost a millionaire at least. So if you're being proactive at all and people watching this video, I'm calling you proactive, then I think you're smart enough to have multiple sources of income and to grow your TSP pretty large where traditional is really gonna penalize you when you start making withdrawals and you, you start getting in these 20% tax brackets. Okay guys, that wraps up my video. I once again am, am biased now that I've done the research, but I hope uh, that you learned something about the difference between traditional and Roth TSP. Definitely leave me a comment down below if you have any thoughts or questions. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I post weekly about military and finance topics and give this video a like so the YouTube algorithm knows that you enjoyed it and you found it useful and it'll recommend it to other people. And until the next video, guys, take care.